There's been drama. There's been action. There's been crashes. If I were a Formula One driver, I'm 27 now. I would have been kicked out already. I don't know. Hi guys, and welcome to the final episode of season one from the Formula One series, Drive to Survive on Netflix. <laughs> With you, your server, Manena Manotu, on another episode of A Girl Talks Formula One. Today's episode is called Crossing the Line. This is basically a summary of the whole season. It's 20 races down and only one to go. The final race of the season takes place in none other than Yas Marina in Abu Dhabi. I actually had the fortune to look at this circuit when I used to live in Dubai, but I never got to go to the race since I left a little bit earlier before the race actually happened. But what is so funny is that the race I could have been able to watch was actually the race I'm gonna be talking about today. So we're finally ending this whole Max Daniel feud because Daniel is finally moving to Renault, who is gonna be replacing him on Red Bull, none other than our favorite Frenchie, Pierre Gasly. Fernando Alonso is leaving the Formula One, finally retiring after 311 races. Talk about crazy, that is so much. Carlos Sainz is taking his seat, and he will be joined by none other than the youngest British Formula One driver and one of our favorite funny guys, Lando Norris. As in for how everything turns out for the Formula One teams for next season, 2019, only two of the 10 Formula One teams are actually keeping his drivers. All the rest, more than half of the grid is going to be 25 or younger. I mean, <laughs> Okay, if I were a Formula One driver, I'm 27 now. I would have been kicked out already. I don't know. We do see this whole situation about how the Formula One is starting to bet on younger drivers. So we'll start seeing how it goes. Red Bull is no longer gonna have their engine manufactured with Renault. They are now moving with Honda. Haas ended up in fifth place in the standings of the teams on 2018. Kudos to them, it's only been their third year in the Formula One. So far, they're doing awesome. As like Christian Horner likes to say, this whole season, there's been drama, there's been action, there's been crashes. And that's exactly the case of what happened with Nico Hulkenberg at the beginning of Yas Marina. After being congratulated for having a good start, he ends up crashing. Classic Nico. <laughs> So he had to be taken out of the car, immediately got out of the race. Well, at least he beat Kevin Magnussen, which was his goal. So we all know Max Verstappen has kind of a really bad temper, like all the time. And we can see in this video how he literally almost punched Esteban Ocon in Brazil. We all know Esteban Ocon is not forming part of the 2019 drivers since he lost his seat with Racing Point. But on one of his races, things got very heated with Max Verstappen after he crashed into him. And Max tried confronting him at the end of the race. Something I really like about Esteban Aachen is that he's always very mature about his battles. He never really creates drama or gives much to talk about. That was the case here. Max Verstappen started trying to heat him up by pushing him until Esteban Aachen tried stopping him he touched the shoulder, Max Verstappen pushed his shoulder and tried punching him again until the whole Racing Point team had to come and stop the boys from fighting. And then at the press conference, Max started saying, well, I don't remember what he said. Some nonsense about how he was right and Esteban was wrong. <laughs> Classic Max. Either way back to the Yas Marina in Abu Dhabi circuit. This is the last battle between former teammates, Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen. Daniel obviously wants to end in a good place and he has everything to win since starting the race. More like, I mean, starting the whole year, Max hasn't had the best start, especially this race since his engine started hot, a lot of drivers started surpassing him, including Daniel Ricciardo. For a really long time, 
Daniel was in third place during the race until he got an unexpected call to boxes. I honestly don't know if it was a good strategy due to his car because there weren't many laps left or more likely it was a strategy to gain more points for the actual person that was gonna stay on the Red Bull team. Point is that after Max's engine cooled off, Daniel, he started performing a little bit better during the race. As I mentioned, Daniel was called to the boxes, almost ending the race. He didn't want to go and he didn't feel like he needed to. But at the same time, he obeyed. And what happened? Max overtook him and ended up the race in third place. Daniel ended up right behind him, which was a major frustration for him because he really wanted to have a good ending with the team that had been his home for a decade. And then talking about my favorite Spaniard, we all know he has always admired Fernando Alonso so much. He normally tends to go to the teams where Fernando Alonso just finished his contract, which is the case of McLaren. Everybody sees him as a son of Carlos Sainz, but Carlos Sainz Jr. is trying to make a name for himself. He is also known as a pretty boy, but as Zach Brown likes to say, he's a pretty face, but he's fast. So you could say he's a fast pretty face, he's pretty and smart, <laughs> perfect combination. And Carlos definitely knows about all speculations about him. So what he says is, you need talent to be in the Formula One. So true. I mean, if he's earned all of his positions, it's been because of his talent not because of his dad or his money. And then his new teammate, Lando, which we all know the great bromance that they have. I'm really gonna miss those two being on the same team. He has always dreamed about being in McLaren, so I'm so happy that his dream is finally coming true and that he's such a young driver with such amazing talents. I can't wait to see more about this little British guy because he has a bright future in the Formula One. Who are your favorite teammates in the Formula One? Don't forget to mention it down below. One to your falls and then another because we finally finished season one. But I am so happy to be starting to share with you guys everything about season two. Much more juiciness and much more drama. As if that was possible. <laughs> See you guys again next week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, or comment down below. As always, such a pleasure talking with you all, and see you again next week.